Summer has just begun. The perfect way to start summer is with an adventure. But adventure to where? Anywhere, really. But where am I going? To the sand dunes. Visiting the sand dunes is a really great opportunity for adventure and excitement. All year I've been longing for a relaxing adventure where I can just hang out with my friends and explore. So what's an adventure? An adventure is something to go do. It's getting out of your house and exploring, mainly with the people you love because you can share great memories. The best part about adventures for me is the people you take with you and the destination you're going to. On my adventure, I'm taking my best friend Katie with me and we are visiting the sand dunes. Katie's mom had offered to take Katie and I to the sand dunes in early summer of 2015. We were so excited to get there and we were hoping to see something brand new that we've never seen before. While at the sand dunes, we learned a lot about the actual dunes themselves, but I really wanted to share a story about our adventure in the sand dunes and what really happened there that day. When we first got to the dunes, we were overwhelmed by the sights we saw. The huge piles of sand had unique designs on the edges because of the way the wind piled them each differently. First we saw the river. Where we stood was probably around the same spot Zebulon Peak stood when he first saw the dunes. The river is filled with water from the melted snow off mountaintops. The mountains nearby have some interesting history and someday I'd love to go visit them. A man named Don Diego de Vargas was the first known European explorer to explore the mountains. De Vargas brought hunters with him when he came. They killed around 500 bison for food. It leaves me to wonder if De Vargas didn't ever show up with those 500 or more bison still roam. We start to hang out in the river where many ancient people once crossed and we followed the river downstream for a while. We saw what looked like miles of sand dunes on and on forever. After a while, we started to head up towards the higher dunes, and we found tons of huge holes in the dunes more than 150 feet deep. So we thought, why not climb into one? As we started to head for the giant dip, I realized how many names the dunes have actually had. Multiple people have come through the dunes, each one inventing a different name for them. The Ute tribe named it the land that moves back and forth. Jackarilla Apache called it the land that goes up and down due to the wind and how it created the unique patterns on the dunes. When we got to the giant hole in the sand, we started to slide down the steep walls. The top of the dip stretched across to be around 50 to 100 feet wide at the least. Once we slid all the way down to the bottom, we started racing across the bottom of the dip. We were running around 20 to 40 feet all at once. By the time we finished a few slides down the dip, the clouds started to form above us. We thought they were going to pass, but they started getting darker and darker. We start sliding down the dip for what seems like the first time still. It starts pouring on us. We tried to climb back up the dip, but the sand is quickly slipping from our feet. We decided it might be fun to play around in the sand while it's raining, so we slid all the way down to the bottom again. The sand was getting harder and harder to walk through by the second. Like totally normal people, we raced across the bottom of the dip in the pouring rain for the thousandth time. We fell a few times, then we decided we should go back. We started attempting to climb back up the dip, but sand was rapidly falling below us. We spent about 10 minutes trying to make it just back up the hill. I felt it was kind of weird to look around and realize how lucky we are to be actually walking around these dunes. Some people actually tried to prevent that. Between the 1920s and 1930s, there were many groups who tried to preserve and protect the dunes. They tried to make it a private monument so that nobody could walk on top of it. One group called the Ladies PEO organization was led by a lady named Myrtle Woods. After she died, the group or organization kind of died with her. Other people also tried to preserve the dunes, but anyway, before we realized it, we were already back at the river. Don't ask me how we got there, because I don't remember. Once we saw Katie's mom, the rain faded. We finally got a chance to dry off and head back to the car to drive home. The whole day was filled with excitement and adventure. I cannot wait to go and visit the National Sand Dunes again.